Hello, my name is Elliot Ward, addiction specialist, and welcome to Coming Clean With Me. And in the studio today is my guest, Shane Samler, also known as Cocaine Shane. How are you doing, Shane? Yeah, good. Nice to meet you, Elliot. And you, Shane. So this is all about getting to understand your addiction, the journey, the path it took you on, and the roads that it took you down. You know, some of the bad things, some of the good things, and yeah. what's come out of it. So tell me how your story began, Shane. Right, I started using cocaine at roughly 16. Like, I tried it when I was 15, but then started using it regularly at 16. And then it just got heavy and heavier, took me to some terrible places, stealing just whatever I could do to get money. And then I started a successful scaffold company at 26, and then I just went off the rails. Like, my using got really heavy, like eight-day benders, like with no sleep. Wow. And it's got a lot worse. And I found out I had MS when I was 23, and that my using took off heavy then as well. Like Even before I started a scaffold company, when I think back, it was just like not good, to be fair, for a long time. Okay, let's, p- let's pick up on a few of those points. So when you started at 16, was that a social thing? Were you going out doing it with friends? Yeah, yeah, it was just a social thing. Six, 16, 17, then I started selling it. I can't remember what age, about 17. Was that to pay for your own usage? No, it's to make money. Oh, you just wanted the money. I never made money. (laughs) You never made money because you used it. Yeah, and my using become Friday, Saturday. It was always Friday every week. But then it become Friday, Saturday, like you were saying about the birds coming up. On a Sunday, it was horrible. And then once in the week, every time I picked it up in the week, I would have to to try it. So it was was a three-day week. Yeah. So you'd pick up your stash to get rid of, and you'd... Do a little tester in the week. Every time, yeah. Every, every time single time. Up, yeah. And then a weekend as well. So three times a week. Yeah. And what sort of quantity was it back then at that point? Uh, Friday, uh, Wednesday, on the Wednesday, I would do quarter. Wow, uh, you yeah. jumped straight in. Yeah, quarter, because then I would just stay awake and then go to work on the Thursday with no sleep. And then on the Friday, it would be Friday night, all night, until Saturday. How much would you use on a Friday? I don't know, like I used because I was selling it, I always had like, it, and it weren't very good gear. Right. So I was probably using and giving away an ounce a week. I've got in loads of debt back then, Damn. Right, because of that. Do you know what I mean? Thought it was a good idea. Dear, thought I was the big I am, and it was just like took me to some terrible place that like I got in thousands of pounds worth of debt back then that my family had to bail me out of, or my mum especially. Right. And it just weren't good. Okay. Yeah, it's weren't good. And and uh, reading your story and looking through my my researchers' notes, um, I see that you were really keen on football at school. Yeah, you're you're a football fanatic, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was good football. Like, like up until I was fourteen. Before I moved out my first school, got kicked out of my first school and went to my second. Why did you get kicked out of the first school? Just because I fell out of a load of lads and it weren't good for me to be there. Like, okay. Do you know what I mean they were all older than me and we was just like cat and dog and I'm best mates with one of them now so yes yeah, just weird. so you went to a different school yeah I got kicked out of the moulding school at 14 I was playing for Essex before that like playing for Colchester oh you were playing good you yeah, were good level good like a really good footballer and then I moved school to get in with the cool kids even though I knew them through my football I started smoking weed. I hated smoking before that. Right. So that's how it started. Were you using coke with them as well? Nah, not a not lot like of 14, 15. I right. tried it because I always ha- hanged around with the older boys. Yeah. So one of them sold it and he was like, do you want to have your first, do you want to have a line? And I was like, I can remember me and my mate who I was at school with trying it and I could just remember saying to my mate who was driving around, dropping it off, who'd give me the line. So fucking pull over. I would have just had to go for a run, do you know what I mean? Like the feeling it gave me instantly yeah. was just, do you know what I mean? I think that's, well, I don't know, but that's what I was always chasing. Oh, so it's, that's the interesting thing, Shane, right? You know, I say this all the time. Yeah. It's the, it, it's the thought of what it once was that you're always chasing. Yeah. And unfortunately, as time progresses, you never get back that feeling, do you? No, nah, not all. Yeah, not all. Yeah, it was just, yeah my using just becomes so often in the end like it, before I went in the Priory on June the 14th it become daily like I was doing uh, an eighth uh, half an eighth to an eighth a day wow and that was just when I could get the money how, how long How long? Or what duration were you doing a, a half an eighth to an eighth a day for? last six years six yeah, years see my scaffold company was doing well like it's been going 11 years my scaffold company was doing well but then I stopped being a partner in that 
because I weren't doing fuck all, didn't deserve to even call myself a partner. So, so hang on, let me understand this, right? <laughs> so you started this scaffolding business, you're using already, yeah. your using starts to escalate, escalate, escalate. Yeah. You're not turning up for work. No. You're not in the business. You're not working on the business. No. And what happened? What happened with that business so, then? See, because I was—it's a family member I'm partners with. Yeah. Um, I just got paid whatever. Okay. And I wouldn't go to work. I would, in the day. I'll tell you what I'll do is just go to the gym. I had a fitness instructor. I was on steroids. I got big. Um, and I never done a day's work really, like or very rare. Um, and then my old man who I'm partners with about six years ago said to me crying, he was going, "Shane, please fucking help me." And I'd been awake all the night before. So I was like, I can't, do you know what I mean? So he was like, if you don't help me today, we just call it quits. Didn't get paid out because I was just getting paid for years. So you know so what, I mean? what happened was your dad started this business with you. He yeah. was invested in you. He was trying to help you yeah. by giving you a career. Yeah. But the coat just absolutely made you blind to the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you reached a point where he just couldn't deal with it anymore. No, yeah, because cause when we started this, he was meant to be a silent partner. Okay. And... Because I got, I had the contacts to get to work. We was doing really well, like a lot of money a month, um, and that done me. And the, right when we first started it, the first week, I had an MS relapse, so I couldn't. When my daughter was born, while we was in the hospital in labour, I had an MS relapse, so I couldn't walk. Like my speech, it was like someone was turning your brain off. Because I'd be like, from the MS, from the MS, okay. so I'd be talking. I'd be like, Ugh, like I couldn't finish my sentence. So that was my first relapse 11 years ago. Let's just, hang on, let's just, for the, for the listeners, let's just rewind yeah. a little bit. Because I know when we were coming here and we were having a coffee together, yeah. uh, you said to me about when you, when you first got diagnosed with MS, you kind of buried your head like an emu. You didn't yeah. tell anyone, did you? No, nah, no. Nah, How old was this when you first got diagnosed? I was 23 when I found out. How I found out is when I used to play football, only with a pub team, like all mates. So I used to, I'd be playing, my, when my heart rate would go up, like, my eyesight would start going. And if when I think back, when I used to be on it before then, when I'd be on it, I used to play Fight Night on the PlayStation. Yeah, I remember. And that. I used to be good. I used to win money, betting. And then, so I'd win money in the week. Friday would come, I'd get on it. And then I'd lose everything, like my eyesight would go. But then it started happening when I was sober, playing football. Okay. And then I went to the doctors, and they sent me for a lumbar puncture, found out I had MS. Um, and I just buried my... Like buried in my head like an ostrich, like like everything. Even like life. an emu. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, whatever I've had in my life. So like, how long? How long from getting diagnosed with MS before you told anybody? Told your family? I told my family. Oh, you I, told your family. I told my family. Okay, but I didn't tell any friends. Okay. Any anyone who knew me. So all help. your close friends, you didn't tell. Nah. For how long? I don't know. Six years. And and during that period of time from getting diagnosed with MS. <laughs> What happened with your usage of coke? It got heavier, without a doubt. In what way? I just used more. Like, I just blocked everything out. I, was, like, I don't know how to explain it. I was just... Whatever was thrown at me, I would just bury my head. Like, I wouldn't take anything in. Like, like an escape? Yeah, massively. Yeah, massively. And what cocaine was for me from when I had MS was it just quietens my head. Because right. I don't know about you, but my head... Like, it comes up with anything from earning money to doing this to doing that. Like, it's absolutely anything. It's an, like, interest, it's an interesting thing you bring up because, you know, having been on podcasts with Dapper and having had yeah. people like DJ Ross, you know, and DJ Pat Wilson, and a lot of these people talk about ADHD mm. and things like that. Have you been diagnosed with that? I had um, a test when I was in the Priory, and they was like, they'd done stuff, and it weren't normal ADHD, but I've got a friend who's... I won't mention names, but he does something. And he was spoke to me. He's like, Shane, I've been diagnosed with intermittent ADHD. Right. He's like, it sounds like you've got that. Yeah. So, I tell you, I tell you what comes across to me is, yeah. I think there is a a very common theme in people who have taken their usage to extremes, yeah. right? And I think they're very impulsive people. I think yeah. you're you're pretty impulsive as well. Yeah. So you do things without thinking about the consequence yeah. of what would happen when you do it. Definitely, like. Everything like even before I had a scaffold company, I would do whatever on the spur of the moment. Uh, wouldn't worry about the consequence that could be through crime, absolutely anything. I'll do it, and people would be like, How oh, do you know what I mean? Are you not worried about what can happen? I'm like, If something happens, I'll worry. Sure, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but that's the story of my life, even like absolutely anything. Like, I don't want to mention much, but quite a lot. 
like my life was like that. Just bury my head in the sand, not worry about it until I'm, until I'm caught. And then I've got to put my hands up and shit what sort of What sort of crime did that take you down? Oh, like metal theft. I've made... Metal theft? Yeah, scaffolding. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like... Were well, you the, steal your own material? Nah, no. Nah, well, I started it like that. <laughs> but I, before that, I used to do it a lot. I've made a few a few hundred grand in cash out of that like I was, in the end after my mum bailed me out with the first drug deal that's how I'd pay for it oh because you were in debt yeah so well, after my mum bailed me out with the first lot when I was about 18 how much was that about 10 20 grand wow and then at 18 years at old 18, 20 grand yeah and then after Ooh. that I then she wouldn't bail me out cause she nearly don't lost, blame her lost her house um so now I started stealing. Like, I've always okay. done scaffolding. I had a year out, but I've always done that. And it's fucking comes in hand in hand. But I don't know any scaffolder who's not done co- who's not on coke. But you know what? Uh, I, I, if I think about how many scaffolders I've had as clients yeah. over 29 years, <laughs> that has to be almost the number one yeah. career yeah. of usage. It's just absolutely... Pfft. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. It is mad. Um, how many times um, did you try and stop before you finally managed to stop? I went into a, a sanctuary lodge in Halstead nine years ago. This was after how long of using? How many years? Oh, using? so nine nine years ago um, from now. So I was twenty eight. I went into sanctuary lodge um, in f- February nine years ago. Okay. So I stayed clean. On, before you go there, yeah. What got you to the point to go to that place then? Cause I, like I said, I was doing eight day benders with no sure. sleep. So my mum, I can remember, I went to sleep outside house in flat in Colchester. I went back to my mum's after a big bender. I think it was eight or nine days even. No sleep. No, nah, no sleep. And <laughs> all I used to do was cocaine. So. Dry sniff. Yeah. Oh, no, I drank back then as well. Okay. There was always loads of people there. Like in Colchester back then, the party didn't stop. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, so it was different people continually coming in. No, it's the same people. Just they were there on, for eight, nine days were, as They well. were on meth. Oh. Like at meow meow. So okay. they never slept. Like a few of them might slip off on day four or five. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I was the only one really who would do coke the whole time. For eight days? For eight days straight, yeah, it was horrendous. Like, I used to drink Mars milkshakes just to get some calories in me, otherwise I'd pass out. Do you know what I mean? It was just... So hang on a minute, you are consciously making a decision to drink a high-density shake yeah. to keep using. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's mad. what you were doing? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've never thought of it like that. Yeah, it's mad. Like... Yeah, it was just absolutely mental. And that was every time. And the beer, because I was not beer, I was cider man. But to try and level yourself off. That's all, I, yeah, that's all I would always drink you, back you're, then. You're like the, uh, the way I used to be in terms of alcohol wasn't my thing. Yeah. But I may occasionally have drunk at the end to bring myself down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. really my thing yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. But that's what you're saying. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Like, that's the, uh, if I look back at all my drinking, I only ever drank to get on it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I don't like drinking. I don't. I'm not a very good drunk. I'm not a funny drunk. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. when I think back, just talking to people. You know when you wake up and you're like, "Fucking hell, what have I done?" Do you know what I mean? And that yeah. was uh, every time when I was drinking. All I those used, messages. You ah, said. mate, you used to get arrested. I got arrested 42 times in in 12 months. You got arrested only for drunken disorder. It was nothing bad. Arrested 42, 42 times, times, times in, in how one long? year when I was 17. Yeah, from alcohol. Yeah, yeah, when I was just pissed. And the head of Essex Police was our goalkeeper's mum. So she, I, when I used to get arrested, I used to go, <laughs> get such and such down here. She used to come and watch us on a Sunday. And she was like, Shane, you've got to stop saying this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, because it was every weekend. Like, it was just, wow. yeah, it was just horrendous. So, you know, listen, an eight day bender is mm. quite an extreme. Yeah. You know, because what's going through my mind is that sleep deprivation. Yeah. That you're having even like two three days of no yeah. sleep you start getting paranoia you start yeah. hallucinating did you experience paranoia see i used to day one coke day two do meth because that would level me out like okay. it'd bring me back around day three get back on the coke and then day four start taking because i used to sell a bit of mdma then right so i'd always have like an ounce in my range rover um and I'll just be no stereotypical Range Rover. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. The yeah, dealer sm- with the Range Rover. Small man syndrome. Always okay. got to get a nice car. Okay. Yeah. So um, get that, and then I'll start eating that, and then I would just start hallucinating. Like it would just 
like him mosquitoes that was the main thing that i can remember you know it's so interesting the amount of people that i have seen over the years that talk about seeing bugs in the bed spiders spiders that's same as me it's the insect thing yeah What's yeah. that about? Oh, nah. See, I can remember like flicking my skin like always towards the end when I was on gear, and that was only one night. Just thinking I was covered in spiders. What my ex missus used to say, Shane, what are you doing? I'd walk around the house, put the lights on, be thinking I'd be killing mosquitoes, and then wake up in the morning, no, there wouldn't be no dead ones. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That was a regular thing. Yeah, they gone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was mad. What, what do you think? What do you think was if you think about? You know, people talk about a root cause of having addiction, and some people say you can have a genetic predisposition to have an addiction. What do you think was the root cause of your addiction? I think, like, the sh- shit I had going on when I was younger, with falling out of people, this and that, having to move out of mould and go to a different school, and then fucking up my football, I think that had a big part to play in it. Do you know what I mean? And hanging around with, they were, they are my mates, but they were the wrong people to hang around with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and That's what, how I, I talk about the tribe mentality because when you when you use right, yeah. you seem to associate with other users. Yeah. You have this tribe, and there are several things that go on. You tend to only see those people when yeah. you're using, right? Yeah. Because if you think about them, they're your friends, and you go, okay, what did I actually do with that friend That's that didn't involve alcohol, that didn't involve drugs, that didn't involve using? When do I see them? Yeah. So what what happened to your tribe? Um, the last like I said six years, I didn't leave the house. I would just sniff indoors. Yeah. But before that. I was always with people, like, because I had a bit of dough then, so I was always p- paying for people's company. Oh, really. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just horrendous. Paying for people's uh, company. Oh, that's what it was like. But I didn't think that. I thought they were my mates. They wanted to be around you because they knew you had gear had on dough. you at the time yeah. and you'd buy some drinks. And you know what? By the end of it, when I didn't have any dough, not one of them rang me up and said, Shane, you're coming out, got free gear and free beer all night. Do you know what I mean? Like... It is just mental. I, I, I say this. It's the most expensive drug in the world that you want to give away. Give it away. <laughs> yeah, you can never go to the toilets. If you get it doing a line yourself, just do it on your own. You're always like, because there's always loads of people in the pubs, isn't it? Yeah. So you're like, hey, mate, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just Do you know mental. what? I, I think in a way it makes you feel slightly better if someone else is doing a line yeah, at the same time as you are. Acceptable, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's more acceptable. Yeah, for sure. So, so that tribe dissipated when you start using at home and you never went back to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I've got um, a, a friend who's 12 years sober this June. Like, he's probably my best mate. He spoke to me the whole way through. Can we say his first name? Chris. Shout out to Chris, yeah, 12 years sober. Chris. Love yeah. that, Chris. He's like, Give he him was, a shout out. Yeah, shout out, Chris. Yeah, he tried to uh, get me into recovery yeah. like years ago. And then I went into my first rehab and he used to come and visit me. Nice. Like, he's still, he's the only person I still speak to, I'm close to. Do you know what I mean? All the other people, my drinking buddies, I've got a couple of old school pals that, that, that they were drinking buddies. One of yep. them is in Sweden now, like a ranger. I speak to him, but to be honest, I don't really talk to a lot, lot of and people. That, and that's the interesting thing. I think when you go through that journey of having an addiction to reaching being clean and being sober uh, and starting to get your life back together, those people just fall by the yeah. wayside. Yeah. Do you miss it? Uh, to be honest, what I miss is just the drugs quite in my head okay. that is the only sometimes I struggle I'm like because my walking's bad as you know yeah, so I can't I work you today, yeah. so I struggle like I'm like what's the fucking point <laughs> it, it's an interesting thing and if, I, I hope yeah. I'm, I'm not overstepping the mark here but when we walked from Starbucks yeah. shout out to Starbucks uh, yeah. sponsor me <laughs> uh, when, you, when we walked from the Starbucks you know up into the studio yeah. today you said something really interesting to me goes like I'm really conscious of people looking at the way that I walk and I'm thinking who gives a flying fuck? Yeah. But you, you, you clearly yeah, do. Massively. So Why? Like, like people walking behind me, like I said to yeah. you. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I don't like walking like with people behind me. I won't do it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It makes me more conscious. And then when I'm more conscious, that makes it worse. Do you know what I mean? You see, like my therapist, I have therapy, and she's like, Shane, do you know, if your body's well, you, uh, if your mind's well, your body will be well. Okay. And I'm like, like, I just find it hard to accept this walking because I've always like played football, box. Do you know I what I mean? Been, been a lad. No, I get so, that. I, get, I really get that I because, really as I said to you before, about four or five years ago, yeah. and I was paralyzed, and I, yeah, went through, yeah, yeah. I went through fusion C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and I can only turn my neck that each way. Yeah. I understand that, and I was thinking about the concept of never being able to walk again. And if you've been active, like I've always been into sport, like yeah, you have, yeah. I think if you've been active, that seems like a quite a high mountain to try and climb over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it was the way you was like, you know, I, I'm, I'm conscious of what people look and think of me. And I'm yeah. like, 
Really? Yeah, see, I am. Like, Why? With my face. Like, Why? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah, but know. listen, hang on. Your face, right, yeah. which you suddenly put onto TikTok to inspire and help other people, yeah. which I think is a great thing, yeah. it is your resource to show people, don't fucking Touch. do this. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Cause they, cause These uh, are the consequences of, 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 of using. Yeah. And yeah. using it, that's such a high level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. See, but... Like it took, like I said to you, like it took, someone said about doing these videos on TikTok. Yeah. It took me a month before I'd done my first video because I would do one and I would see my face and I, I'd just hate it. Like, I get so self conscious about stuff like After that. After how long did, did you get this nose clip? Um, my nose in April this year. Um, I went for a brain uh, face scan in November last year. Um, and they said you've got a gigantic cold, but I couldn't see because it was all swollen. Right. Um, and stuff like that, I couldn't notice it. Anyway, I got clean in April for three weeks. April, what year? Last year. April 23. So before I even went into the priory, I got okay, clean got for three weeks. All the scabs went down, and that's when I could see the hole. That's when you noticed. In it. April, yeah. Is that when it became clear that it was Yeah, collapsed? I couldn't notice it because my, I told you, all my nose was so swollen. Like, I couldn't see it. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it was in April, and then I got back on it, and then that become a hole. Hold on a minute. Did you get back on it because you could see the damage and you couldn't deal with it? I don't know, to be honest. I just I know I got back you, on it. You know, it. like, when you said to me, that suddenly calmed down, and I suddenly noticed there was a hole in it, and my nose had collapsed, and then I got back on it. I'm just wondering if there was a, a part of you that thought, you know, fuck it, I've done this much yeah, damage, yeah, and yeah. I can't deal with it, and it's like, should yeah, I go and use? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't know the reason, like, I can't put my finger on the reason. And then um, in June, like I went in on June the 14th. June 23. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it June? Yeah, June 24. We're 24. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I went in uh, to the Priory then. And um, I had that hole on the 2nd of June. That uh, I thought it was a spot. So I was popping it. <laughs> and then, like, it didn't go. It kept, it was like a volcano, like in pus. Do you know what I mean? It was disgusting. I hope you're not eating your breakfast. Nah. <laughs> and my missus used to stick, you know, them little circle plasters? Yeah. Used to stick that on my nose. And then she took it off after a couple of days. It was like, oh, my God. And you could put a pen inside my nose. Wow. Uh, so bad. Like, my mouth was seized up. Like, my ears were just horrendous, like, leaking. And then my dad see me, and he said to my mum, Shane's dying. Because he didn't know about my using, really. Your dad, hang on. Because... Cause your dad did not know. What, what did your dad do before the scaffolding company? He owned a sex shop. <laughs> so Okay, yeah. perfect. So your dad owned a sex shop, yeah. right? <laughs> so have you got a house full of like blow-up balloons? Blow, blow up when I was a kid, we used to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. Yeah. Really so you've got this house, right? And as you, you walk through the house with your mates like on your 13th birthday, oh, mind all the blow-up toys. It was right? the garage. It was a suitcase in the garage where all that was. <laughs> so, so to be honest with you, your dad's a bit of a, uh, a boy in terms of your dad's not Someone who doesn't understand the world. Yeah. Your dad's a lad, right? But he's never been around drugs. Oh, really? Never had friends that you? Never been around. Because he was born and raised in Oxford back... I yeah, know. Oxford. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Like, And he's just, just oblivious to it. And because he really? didn't want to know. But to go into that industry that... Um, I, just, I don't know. I had this perception if you went into the industry of selling sex toys yeah. and having a sex shop, I thought you'd be quite streetwise. No, nah, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, he's not with drugs. Like, because he's never had it around him. He moved from Oxford at, like, well, 23. Do you know what I mean? To go to Scotland and then move to Essex with my mum. Okay. So he's just never so been around So your drugs. dad didn't know, but your mum was aware. Yeah. Okay, go on. Carry yeah. on. So, like, oh, I don't know what you want me to say. It's like, yeah, my dad didn't know, like, all the time. And then in... Uh, June, my dad said to my mum, well, I was sitting by the swimming pool. Okay. My dad was sitting around the table. You, you live next door to your parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. House? They've got a house next door yeah, to each right other. Yeah, right next to each other. Okay. So I was sitting on the sun lounge by the pool, and my dad said to my mum, fucking Shane's, what's the matter with Shane? He's dying. And my mum said to him then, he's really bad on drugs. <laughs> See, because he thought I was still clean from when I left the uh, my last rehab, I think. So he knew about the, the first rehab. Yeah. So and that, the second rehab. Yeah. Okay, so he knew about the first rehab, right? And he knew you had a problem. You then went into a second rehab and he knew you had a problem. Yeah. And he thought that would have been resolved now. Because he just, I don't know what, he was just oblivious. He did, maybe he didn't want didn't to know. Want to know he exactly. didn't want to know. He didn't want to think about his son being in that situation. Nah, yeah, exactly. I understand that. See, because the second rehab, my friend won the lottery. Um, and what? he'd 
I oh, know, yeah, and he just turned up around my. He was my, like my best mate, Grant. When up. you say won the lottery, won the Euro millions, the uh, uh, raffle. How much is a million it? pounds? Your friend won a million <laughs> yeah. pounds on the so Euro raffle. So he just turned up around my house, and he was like, "What are we going to do, Shane?" And I was like, "Fucking, I don't know. I can't afford to go in rehab because I've lost everything." And he was like, "Come on, Shane, we'll go to rehab." So he he, put, he had an addiction as well. Alcohol, he was. So you got you had a friend who had an alcohol addiction. How long had you known the friend? Uh, since I was. Fucking hell, he's my best mate from growing up, five. Childhood friend. Yeah, f- okay. like, proper. He won a million pounds yeah. of euros. He had an alcohol addiction. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I got this annoying tickly cough. And um, he sa- and you said, I don't know, I need to deal with this. And he went, come on, let's go to rehab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he took you off to rehab. Yeah, yeah. me and him went. Where? Like, uh, in South End, uh, I can't remember, the lighthouse. Okay. We went there. Uh, he only done two weeks. I'd done a month. And then after that, I Hold on, you come out of that month. How long you clean for after you come out? I went into the dry house in South End. Yeah. I'm not being a snob. I didn't like it. It was in a shit hole. Like it weren't, it weren't nice. Okay. Um, then I left there after a couple of days and I was back on it within four days. Let's, you know what? Let's just recap on this, right? Because what I am going to say, and I say this often, I am not against any methodology, any therapy, any help yeah. to, st- to help people stop. And I think there are certain things that work for certain people, yeah. and I think there are certain things that don't work for certain people. But let's have a quick recap. Yeah. The first rehab that you went into, right? Yeah. How long were you in the first rehab? Uh, for a month. Okay. After that month, how long before you got back on it? Four months, then I drank, but then five months till I was on the gear. Four, five months. So, so you came out of the rehab, yeah. and you were clean, and you were loving life, yeah. right? And uh, you were going on with your life, and four months later, you start drinking alcohol, which was a bit of a gateway for you. Yeah. And then a month after that, so five months having le- left yeah. the rehab, you're back using. On the coke, yeah. And when you went back, did you go back, bang, straight back no. to where you were? Or no, no, no. It's, how was it? I, I use every couple of months for... Oh, oh so this is what happened. Yeah. I don't even Before you tell me, yeah. I'm going to tell you what happened. <laughs> I, I know it, right? Yeah. So you come out of rehab, and you're clean for four months. You start drinking alcohol. By month five... You start using, and you only use occasionally, a lot less yeah. than you originally used. Yeah. So you think to yourself, Crack. "This isn't so bad. <laughs> I've got this yeah. right." Every addict would love to go. Oh, I'd love to be able to just use every couple yeah. of months, once, three times a year. Oh, I yeah. fucking love that, right? Yeah. And you thought you had it, yeah. And so it was a couple of months, and then a couple of months, and then a month, and then a week, and then. That's what happens, it spiral like that? Yeah, well, what happened is, it was a couple of months, like I said, and then my ex-partner's brother died. He was okay. my brother's best mate as well. He's only 21, like, just died in his sleep. And then my using just become daily because I was with her family. Um, so, so like you know, this is, this is interesting because through all your using, you began to use as an emotional crush. Yeah. And you didn't have the tools to help you deal with things that came up in life and all of yeah. a sudden this terrible things where you lose somebody who's yeah. close to you and your go-to is to get on drugs yeah yeah and then it just spiraled back down to where you were just literally from then it's become daily okay. really. so that, that was after the that's the second rehab is this yeah the yeah rehab? the second okay rehab, so yeah. now you go to the third rehab how long are you in the third rehab for a month so now another month in the rehab yeah. third rehab different rehab Sec- oh well the last time the, the how many you done, you've done three i've rehab. done four but Sorry, i've four. been sober f- since the third okay let's so. okay so the first rehab five months five months second rehab Two days. Two days? Like when I come out. Two days? Four days. Four days, I think it was. Being generous. Well, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Second rehab, you've been in for a month. Yeah. Because people say this to me. They go, oh, you know, I've been in rehab for a month and I haven't used. And I go, okay, that's great. And I think it's great. Yeah. And I think it's good that you can go there. But you're not in the real world. Nah. You are not around your triggers and your associations and you've had a shit day and you've had a good day and you've got yeah. some money in your pocket and your mates are out and all of a sudden you have a beer and the sun's coming out. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. not the real world. The real world is suddenly you're back in reality. After how many days of the second rehab? I thought I'd come out and then I last, I went into the dry house like I said. Yeah, you didn't like I it. I didn't like it. for you. Yeah, it went for me. Not posh then, enough. <laughs> well, it's not even that. It was just like, I mean like, um, the like a homeless place. Yeah. Okay, I get it. So, um, I come out of there for four days. I was back at work scaffolding after yeah. a month because my walking was like this when I went in. Okay. And then after four days of coming out, I was back at work. Went back to work on a Monday, on the Tuesday, still sober. On the Wednesday, I relapsed. How, um, were you at work when you relapsed or at home? Nah, at home. Yeah. So you'd finished work, yeah. went home. Take me through that. Yeah. You finished work, you went home. What made you decide to go and get it? See, I don't know what made me decide, but I can remember doing it and I... Uh, 
you know them Zoom CA uh, uh, AI meetings. Yeah. So I was doing that. Obviously, whoa, 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 I know. Whoa, whoa, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> You're on a Zoom video link. Yeah. With an AA meeting, right? Going, yes, this is my 27th day sober yeah. and talking to other people and they're doing their journey. And in the meantime, you're racking it up, going, doing a line. See, it was. No. Yeah, it was at the start of the meeting. I'd done one. Um, and then, yeah. It was and you just, carried on being uh, in the meeting. Because I knew all people in there, like who I was in the rehab with. So I was like, fucking speaking to them on Texas. And I was like, I can't let them down. Do you know what I mean? It's fucked. Like, it was mental. Like it was just like so messed up. You're in an AA meeting. Yeah. While you're racking up but, a line before the meeting, yeah. and then disappearing during the meeting, doing yeah. another line to That's come a- back. <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, that was pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was. Horrible. And then you reached another dark point where you decided to go into the next rehab. This is the third rehab. Now. Oh yeah, since the second rehab, yeah. my nose was nothing like this. Okay. Uh, and my using then got heavy. Like um, it was heavy anyway. Like. Half an eighth to an eighth of that every two days. That, that is full on. Yeah, every full two on. days. That used to be. And then since the second rehab, it's been like daily or every other day if I can make it. Normally, if I could do every other day, I would finish one day and then say I finished at 12, 11 o'clock, I'd start taking painkillers. I was on about 30 or 40 painkillers a day. And in the end, or more, that was the only thing I could sleep. Wow. So I could sleep for an hour and a half then. Like, it was just... I'm not surprised. Oh, mate, it was just such a dark place to be in. I can remember when I went into the Priory, when she'd done the telephone assessment, she said to me, Shank, you remember what you said to me? She was like, you was crying on the phone to me, saying, all I want to do is sleep. Like, I, do you know what I mean? But I can't remember that. I'm like, fucking hell, this is shit. It's bollocks, me walking's bad. I, like, I keep thinking I could go back there, but then I forget of how bad it was. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was in such a bad place. And that went on for years. Like, at least two and a half years. Not in the end. Do you know what I mean? And then what what was the final point that that made that shift to get you clean? My dad paid me. Because, like I said, I was trying to go in a free rehab. Yeah. I was trying to do that. And the things they were saying to me, I was like, listen, I'm dying. And then my dad seen me that day. And he booked me into the Priory the next day. Okay. And then from there, I was four weeks in there. Come home. And then went to South Africa for yeah. six weeks. To like another rehab. Another rehab, yeah. secondary rehab. And I've stayed sober since. And how long is that now? Uh, since June the 14th. So I've got a Fucking love that. Thank well you, done, mate. mate. Yeah, cheers. Well done, mate. Cheers. Well done, that. Listen, I'll tell you what's interesting about this story is you went through four rehabs. And I have to take my hat off to you because you didn't give up. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody gets clean when they try on their own or, or, or necessarily the very first time they try. And sometimes it takes trying it again and again yeah. and again. And and what I admire about you is you didn't give up, you know. Nah. You kept pursuing it. You kept yeah. going for it. Yeah. Um, I don't like to glorify it, but, you know, I do like people who are listening to be able to go, yeah, I did that, I did that, I did that. What's one of the craziest things you did while you were on it? Uh, well, the repetitive thing is the most common thing. If I've got something planned... Like, so I've got something planned. It could be going on a limo trip to London with the lads. I would always fuck up the night before. Do all the gear that I've got for that night. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so you've got it in for the boys. Yeah, I've got it in for the you've boys. You've got it all planned, but you're now sitting there going, I'll just do a little bit before tomorrow just night. Just do a line. And then when it's in the drawer, it would talk to me. It wouldn't, I couldn't leave it alone. What's it say? It was fucking, I'm here. <laughs> like that. Do you know what I mean? Or And then it was even as bad as this. My Come mate, use me. Yeah. My mate got married. I was the best man. And the whole lot had fucked up. I paid for the stag do with two limos. And the night before that, I just got fucked, done an all-nighter. Turned up in fucking winkle pickers and shoes in the summer horse racing. It was just horrendous. And then turned up for the wedding, done an all-nighter the night before. Didn't have a speech, a fuck all. Do you know what I mean? It was everything. Absolutely everything. When we had the wedding photos, we all had our hands like that. Me, the groom, the bride and the bridesmaids. And then when we looked back at the photos, my hands were filthy because I'd done a day at work and then done an all-nighter. Fair enough, I had a shower but didn't scrub. So I had all scaffold oil all, all over my hands. Do you know what I mean? I'd, no matter what it was, it could be anything. Do you know what I mean? But if I had something planned, I couldn't stick to it. The amount of times I said about work, I'd work Saturday. And if I'd done a lie detector test on the Friday, I would have passed because I meant it. Do you know, but, it's funny you should say that because I, I, I did a, a video the other day that I put out on TikTok that said, um, and a client actually said to me, he said, if I had a lie detector yeah. at 4 a.m. in the morning, 
regretting and remorsing and thinking, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> I and do. saying I'd never do it again. He said, if you gave me a lie detector at that very moment in time, I pass it. Exactly. I pass it. And I think every person with an addiction actually believes that yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's what happens. You get to that point five, six, seven, well, in your case, several days later, yeah. but you on that come down and that's when you're full of regret and remorse yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. you believe you're never going to touch yeah. it again. Yeah. The problem is this, Shane, that that belief that you're never going to do it again, that memory begins to delete itself, become smaller and smaller until it completely fucking disappears. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. There was something I really, really loved about something that you said. Uh, I'm just trying to find it. I've got so many notes here. Oh, yes. Come on. I want to know. Explain this to me. Explain cost and consequences. What does that mean? So the people listening who don't know what that means, explain what that means. Right. Costs are what it's cost me in... Job losses, like opportunities lost, like days off work. I've done that when I was in rehab. Costs and consequences. And mine come out at about £2 million. The scaffold company, say a million. Um, and then all the stuff that I've stolen. Do you know what I mean? I'll like, tell you what. For the listeners at home, if you if they wanted to go home and while they're listening to do a cost and consequence, explain to them how they do that. Right. You get given a list. What I, what I got given in rehab was a list of... The things that it's cost you, so like on average, like a scaffold company has cost me like thousands of pounds. So, so the money lost from work. Yeah. The yeah, things that I've lost, like jewellery, cars. So the valuable items that you that you managed to save and work to yeah. get that you've lost. Yeah, yeah. What else? Like business opportunities lost, like. So potential things yeah, that like might have come off. I could have had a job for a building site. Got it. I pulled into the car park. Fucked, couldn't go in there. Yeah. So that was like a big job opportunity lost. Yeah. Like days off, like yep. jobs you've lost, yep. like the amount of things. So, you, so not going to, uh, I want to say measure up, estimate, estimate a job. Yeah, so yeah. Go and get the job. Price the job. Like yeah, price well, the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So all the days off you've had, how many jobs you've lost because of it? Because if anyone's like me, fucking, I spent my whole life until I started started the scaffold company. I just couldn't hold a job down. I was all right at my job, yeah. but I just couldn't, like, like I said, I'd promise people I'd be in and just wouldn't fucking Okay, be. so that's the cost. Now explain the consequences. The consequences is what you've lost. Like the biggest thing for me, it's not the money, is fucking not seeing my kids grow up. How old are like, they now? My boys are 15 and 14. They live with me now. Oh, nice. Um, my little girl was 11 in Birmingham. Do you know what I mean? So, but it's just cost me years of their life. Like, do you know what I mean? I was best friends with my boys. And then I just lost like all all reason to be called a dad, really. Do you know what I mean? That was that's the hardest thing. Right. Do you know what I mean? When I see them now, I just look some days. Like when I look at their old photos, I'm just like, it just breaks my heart. It really does. <clears throat> I understand that. So tell me, how's your li- how's your life different now, being clean and sober from when you had an addiction? Well, since when I was in addiction, I always used to watch Joe Rogan. You know, yeah, yeah, I know no, Joe Rogan. Like I don't him, know him personally. Yeah, so. yeah. But Joe, if you're listening, yeah. you have to be on your podcast, <laughs> yeah. buddy. See, he was doing all stuff on plunge pools and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, he's very into wa- that. Yeah, and I used to watch it and be like, fucking hell, I'd like to do that. And I couldn't do anything. Like, I could, but Towards the end, like, my bed to my bedroom side, because I wouldn't even pick my gear up, it'd be picked up for me. And then from my bed... Sorry, well, you have your gear delivered to you. No, nah, what do you uh, mean? Yeah, someone would pick it up for me. Oh, your your selling part. No, yeah. no, nah, nah, no. Nah. Your personal Using, use. Using, yeah, someone. Sorry, your personal use. You have someone go and get it for you and bring it yeah, to you. In the end, I did. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> how much were you buying at a time? What was the quantity you bought? I was only buying half an eight for an eight. Okay, you know you're buying half an eight for an eight at a time. Yeah. but someone's going to get it for you. Yeah. yeah go on. So then I would lay in bed playing poker. Like I'm, I fucking hate poker, but I would lay in bed playing poker. Like for fuck it, I looked at my game time. It was weeks. Like. For you know money, I mean? yeah, yeah, no, all for free, like okay. whatever. It wouldn't bother me, but I'd just play that, and then I'd get out of my bed, go to my bedroom side, which is probably to where that door is. Okay, um, and then I'd fall over in the end. I couldn't walk; like my walking was that bad. Like it was horrendous. So that's why that's why I stopped really because I couldn't use. Do you know what I mean? I would even have a tray, like so I could lay in bed, not move, just chop it up on the tray. Do you know what I mean? It's like a movie. Uh, well, fucking hell, it's dark. Yeah, it was a dark place, mate. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, it weren't good. So that's a consequence, my health. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was talking to someone the other day. If my health was normal, if I still went to work, I probably would have done what every other scaffolder does. Do you know what I mean? That would have just been their life. Like, 
but more consequences. But is it a life? No, nah, exactly. It's not. Is yeah, it I wouldn't. A life? I wouldn't go back now. Now that I know, but do you know what? Everyone in the building game really just bumbles their way through life, don't they? And that's yeah. just life. Goes up the pub every Friday, spunks all their dough. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's funny because I had a client of mine probably about five years ago. Bricklayer came to see me. He was using daily. Yeah. Um, and he had three bricklayers working for him. So he could kind of sometimes go off work, yeah. but still got a wage. And uh, when he stopped, we stayed in touch. And I said, <laughs> excuse me. And I said, what do you want to achieve? He said, I, I want to have a number of bricklayers working for me so that I can get contracts with people like Barrett Holmes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can tender for them. And I said, well, how many bricklayers do you need? And I, I can't remember the number, but he said something like 100, 200, 300. It was a lot of bricklayers, yeah, yeah. right? Because I, I, I was thinking, wow, that's the amount of wages yeah, every yeah, single yeah. week because you probably don't get paid for like yeah, 90 yeah, days. Yeah. And uh, I was in touch with him not long ago and he had 375 bricklayers working for his company yeah, yeah. now. Because he was clean, he was able to focus. He was able to tender for jobs. Yeah. He was able to do you know estimations, yeah. things that he didn't. And that's what happens when you use. You think, okay, I'm making a living. I'm paying the bills. Kids have got clothes. Food's on the table. And, and I'm doing all right. But they could be doing so exactly. much better. Exactly. Yeah, that was me. Like, just lived weeks, weeks. I was on the right money. But I never had fuck all to show. Back then, I used to have, when I worked for someone, I used to have a little Astra van, full up with red diesel. So I didn't, do you know what I mean? I didn't have to pay for fuck. I was on good money, yeah. but still couldn't afford to live, really. And used to pay my rent and bits on my last paycheck when my rent's due. So say my rent's due is on the 25th, I get paid on the 22nd or whatever. I would just use all that money uh, for rent. Do you know what I mean? And then just tick myself up to the eyeball again. So I was just in that repetitive cycle. And then when, like I said, I started the scaffolding, as things was doing all right. Yeah, but then you got money flowing now. Yeah, and then I was just, I bought a Range Rover, fucking wanted that. But as soon as I got the Range Rover, got a TT. Do you know what I mean? I was just always trying to do something Looking else. for the next Yeah, thing. then got a Porsche. Do you know what I mean? I was just trying to fill the hole in the soul. Do you know what I mean? With whatever, watches, like jewellery. It was just horrendous. Like, and do you know what? Now that I'm sober, fair enough, my head's still fucked. But I don't want to feel the hole in the soul. I'm, I'm happy, like, not a massive, like, like, having barely fuck all money. Do you know what I mean? I'm just happy with, happier with life. Like, since I've been sober, I've done a bungee jump in Africa, done a skydive. Like, wow. they do the ice bath mode, says. Yes, they're I thing, saw that. Yeah, they're things that I would, do you know what I mean? When I said about watching Joe Rogan, like, I used to watch things. Fucking hell, I'd like to do that. But now I'm able to do stuff and just be there when I say I'm going to be there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. I, I read something else that you said. I, I love what you said to this answer. Uh -uh. <sighs> what are the words of encouragement you try to give someone who's trying to stop? Fuck. Do you remember me. what you said? No. <laughs> Go on, let me see what you say first and then I'll, I'll fill you in on anything you didn't say. What, would... wor what, what words of encouragement will you give to someone who's also trying to stop? I can't remember saying this, but I can't remember what I said. Go on, tell me what I said. No, no, just give, give me, you give me one, one word of encouragement for someone who's trying to stop. I what would you say to them? Don't oh. fucking get in the routine of doing it all the time and fucking it, fucking up your whole life. Because before me, it took everything. The only thing it didn't take was my life. And that was going to be the next thing, without a doubt. But okay. what did I say? Well, you said, I love what you said. I, I, you said, fucking stop before you can't stop. Did I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that what you believe? Yeah, fucking yeah, stop yeah. before you can't yeah, stop? Don't like for youngsters, fucking what is good about it really? Do you know what I mean? Fucking, yeah, you know, I just can't understand why I would get in the routine of doing that because that fucking takes, like I said, everything. Strips you of absolutely everything. And also you said addiction will take everything from you like and then it will take your life. Exactly, yeah. That's exactly That's right. That's what I believe, yeah. I, I agree with you. And the one another thing you said is, don't let yourself hit rock bottom or go into the basement below. See, with me, like, you know, people say, oh, have you hit rock bottom? Yeah. I fucking hit rock bottom and went into the basement like fucking five more stops. Do you know what I mean? So when you think you've hit rock bottom, that's fucking bad. But then it goes fucking a that's lot so deeper. true. Yeah, it goes that's a so lot That's so true. Deeper. But you know what I'm going to say, Shane? If when you hit the bottom of the basement, you're looking up, at least you can see the way out. Exactly. And that's what you did. Yeah. That's what you yeah. did. So, you know, it's interesting because here's the weirdest thing. Let's say you use and you have a good time, right? Human nature means you're going to want to use again. Do it again, yeah. Right? And if you have a good time, you're going to want to do it again until you're not having a good time, but now you feel you have to do it. Can't stop. And that's what yeah. happens, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, it does. Like when I think of my using, like uh, to begin with, it was a good crack. Do you know what I mean? No getting exactly. away from it. No getting away from it. The early years, you can have a good blast. Yeah. And here's what the interesting thing is: people always think I'm never going to end up like that. Nobody starts using and think I'm going to use for five years, ten years, fifteen yeah. years. Yeah. You always think it's a good time. Yeah. See, do you know what? When I was selling it, when I was seventeen or eighteen, I can remember we used to drop it off to a geezer who was cut and twitching. Do you know what I mean? He's a little bit older and he was fucking in a bad way. And I used to say to my mate, I'll never turn out like that. Yeah. And that, he was better than me now. He looks, do you know what I mean? Back then, he was in a better way than I am now. Yeah. And fucking, I was saying that then. So that is not your dream to become like how you end up. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. just cre- it's a slow creeper. It is it a really slow is. creeper. Yes, yeah, a slow it definitely, creeper. Definitely. You do not see it coming nah. until it's there. Yeah. Everybody thinks it's all right once a week. It's yeah. all right twice a week. Yeah. Until it's every weekend, and then it's one day in the week, and then it's two days in the week, and you and you don't realise how that's ever going to hit you. No. It just does. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it that just is, yeah. does. You know, it, it, it's 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 mind blowing how it affects you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mate. Yeah, so it's... what you know, I know you have a lot of youngsters listening to your TikTok channel. Um, what what are you shocked about these days? Um, when I get messages from people who are 16, because my kid's 15, yeah, and they say, I've been on it for three years, I'm like, fucking, like, and they message loads more things, of course. Like, talking about it, and I'm just like, mate, fucking see what it's done to me, do you know what I mean, I, I, and I started at 16 then, you ain't yeah. even, you were a fucking kid at 13, yeah. do you know what I mean, that's younger than my youngest boy, Yeah, and I'm like, I would hate for them to be on it, yeah. like, it would kill me, sure, I, well, Hopefully they won't because they know what's happened to me. Exactly. And their mum's a drinker. Do you know what I mean? So they've seen, they've got, when I was in rehab, they said every addict's got one of these, at least one of these five things. Genetics, Mm -hmm. geographic, Mm -hmm. um, fucking, I can't remember. But there was three, genetics, geographic, uh, yeah, I can't remember the others, but there was five. And I was like, you've got three, because I couldn't remember the other two when I said to them, I was like, you've got the first fucking three. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, trauma. That was the third one. I trauma, can't remember the other. Yeah. And they've got that. Do you know what I mean? So they have got all the traits already. I mean, it's funny because I, I get lots of messages, as, as I was talking to you earlier, from people both saying, A, yes, this has really helped me, and B, I really need help. Mm. Uh, and as you're right, I get messages from 13, 14 yeah. year olds, <laughs> and they're buying, it, they're buying it, and they're between them and their mates and doing one line, and it's okay. Well, it is right. Well, not that it's okay, but... It's all it is at that point until eventually it becomes more frequent. So listen, we're going to wrap things up. Shane, I really appreciate you coming, sharing your experience with me. Uh, It's going to be great for those people out there who are struggling themselves. Last word of advice that you're going to give to somebody who is trying to find the way out, feels like they failed before, feels like they don't have a chance to get free or clean. What would you tell them? Well, I'll tell them if I can stop, fucking absolutely anyone can stop. Do you know what I mean? Do things that are suggested, like reach out to like-minded people and just do what, do you know what I mean? What's suggested, like anyone can honestly get this if they put in the work. Do you know what I mean? It's easy to sit there and say, I want this, but you've got to do the fucking work. I agree. Do you know what Shane, I mean? Shane, it's right. been a privilege. Thank you very much for Top your time. Man. Thank you. Take Cheers, care. pal. Thanks a lot.